In Jesus' name we pray. Almighty God, we thank you. We bless your name. We glorify you. We know that Christ is exalted. He is glorified. And we know that he is able to do all things. At the mention of his name, all problems will disappear. Yeah. We are praying that tonight you will do something definite in every life, for every family, for every minister represented here. Your name will be glorified. Your people will be blessed. And I pray that through this message, you will open our spiritual eyes. Help us to see what we possess already. And let your people enjoy their inheritance. In Jesus' name we pray. Please be seated. Tonight we are talking about spiritual authority in ministry. Once again, I want you to remember that this is a conference or a congress of ministers and leaders. Because of that, I will take time to explain to you what spiritual authority is all about and how that helps you in the ministry that God has committed into your hands. We're going to consider two questions. One posed to the Lord Jesus Christ and the other one posed to his apostles. And these two questions are related to spiritual authority in ministry. And the questions will help us to understand what authority is and what authority is in spiritual realm and how it helps in ministry. In Matthew chapter 21 verse 23 Matthew 21, verse 23. And when he was come into the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching. And he said, By what authority doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority? This question opens up the truth, the reality about authority. By what authority doest thou these things? So, there is a deed that is done. There is a wonder that is manifest. There is a sign that is shown. There is a supernatural act that you can see in manifestation when there is authority. And even the unbelievers, they will see that deed, they will see that sign, they will see the wonder, they will see the supernatural act, they saw it. They said, by what authority doest thou these things? There's another thing. Authority is given. And who gave thee this authority? You bring those two things together, then you begin to understand what spiritual authority is all about. In Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 4, verse 7 and verse 10. And when they had set them in the midst. They asked by what power or by what name have you done this? You will see that the question is similar, although some different words are used. First of all, something had been done. And if you refer back to chapter 3, it's the healing of the lame man. He was born lame. And at this time was about 40 years of age and had never walked and a supernatural act had taken place. A deed, 
a sign, a wonder had been manifested and they knew it would have taken power, authority and it would have been done in a name. So they said, by what power, by what name have you done this? In verse 10, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you whole. There are four things we want to take note of. Number one, authority, power, and name are closely linked together. Authority, power, and name are closely linked together. You can see that in the two questions. In Matthew, by what authority have you done this? And in Acts, by what power, by what name have you done this? For you now to understand authority, link those three words together. You find Christ having power. The power to heal, the power to deliver, and that power was irresistible, and it was manifested in a supernatural way. But then he was going away, and he gave the disciples his name, and everything he represented was in that name. All the power, all the ability. All the divine art he could manifest was in that name. And he gave that name unto them. And now, if they will pray in that name, it will be as if he himself were praying. And the authority and the power he manifested when he was physically present will be manifested. And so you have the authority being the power to do something because you are being given divine ability by a higher person. So you understand what authority is. There's a second thing we notice. By what authority doest thou these things? By what name, by what power have ye done this? The second thing we learn therefore is that deeds, exploits, supernatural acts, signs and wonders become visible where supernatural authority or spiritual authority is exercised. Number three, who gave thee this authority or by what name have you done this? That means then the right to exercise such power is conferred on you by someone of irresistible power. The right to exercise such power is conferred upon you by someone, capital S, that has irresistible power whose name carries irrevocable authority. That means then, when you are exercising that authority, you don't think about your feeling. Your feeling has nothing to do with it. You don't think about uh, your power, natural power, that has nothing to do with it. Because someone with irresistible power and with irrevocable dominion and authority has conferred that authority upon you. Number four, the one with delegated authority. The one, that's the minister now, that's talking about you. The one with derived authority. He speaks and he acts and then divine sovereignty will support and accomplish what he has said. That's authority. You see, when you are talking about authority, 
There are two that are working together. The minister, he is visible. And our Lord and Savior in heaven, invisible. And there is a connection between the visible minister and the invisible Lord. And you speak and you act because of that authority. And he, with divine ability, in his sovereignty, will support, will accomplish what you have said. And that authority you will begin to manifest. If you have been manifesting it already, you will manifest greater authority in Jesus' name. Very quickly, there are three points we are going to look at. Number one, equipping ministers with spiritual authority. Equipping ministers with spiritual authority. Number two, examples of authority in ministry. Examples of authority in ministry. Number three, exercising spiritual authority. I please, I'm pleading with you to pay attention. And also, I'm pleading with you that all that we're saying, you will apply to yourself. I told you uh, the other day, as well as yesterday, that God is not looking for one superstar in this generation because there is a lot to be done and just one elijah cannot get the job done africa is so large and other continents and countries beyond africa they are so large and by the grace of god god has put you there in the place where you are whether you are a man or you're a woman and as God has put you there, he will back you up. You remember, we have learned this already. He appoints, he anoints, he approves. The people he, he appoints, he also anoints. And the people he appoints and anoints, he also approves. And I believe he has appointed you. And I'm sure he has anointed you. He will approve your ministry. Therefore, please look up to the Lord and just believe the Lord. Remember, it may just be that one word, come. And you step out of that boat. I said that the other day, I said it yesterday. You step out of that boat, you will walk on the waters. Number one, equipping ministers with spiritual authority. In, in uh, Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9, verse 1. These are not strange verses of scriptures. You know them. Then he called his 12 disciples together. And he gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. Now, have you ever thought about it? He didn't give them any material sin. He didn't bring out an handkerchief and say, Peter, take this handkerchief. Matthew, take this handkerchief. John, take this handkerchief. There was no transparency of anything physical. But it was just transferred on an invisible line. They were just before him and he said, I give you power i give you authority and those people not walking by sight they didn't see anything they didn't get any handkerchief there was not even any oil poured upon them they accepted they received and as they received they went out and they manifested it last night he gave you authority and I believe you stretched out your hands of faith. I believe you received. Now that you have got it, understand. In passing across, that authority to you. You might not get it in an anchorship. You might not get it in olive oil. There may not be any touch as such. But he has pronounced the word. And then he gave them. 
And as he told them, I give unto you the accepted. They believe, and it was unto them according to their faith. Luke chapter 10, and in verse 19. Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give unto you. It's just the pronouncement. Now the disciples didn't have any difficulty of believing when Jesus said, I give unto you. Because they have what Jesus Christ giving healing and giving deliverance. For example, the Syrophoenician woman came and said, My daughter is grievously tormented and begs of the devil at home. And Jesus said, I give deliverance to that daughter. You can go back. Your faith will make her whole. And without touching, without transferring any material thing, in that same hour, that lady or the daughter of the woman was healed. And the centurion came and said, My servant lies at home, sick of the palsy. And Jesus said, I will come and heal him. And then the man said, You don't need to come. I know you can stand here and you can give it unto me. And I have an envelope here. I can collect it in the envelope. I can take it to that man. The envelope is my faith. Therefore speak the word only. And my servant shall be healed. And without any transference of anything physical, material. He spoke the word. Be it unto you as you have believed. And the man went back. And he saw that his servant was made whole. The disciples had seen that. That whenever Jesus said, I give unto you, they will not wait for any physical manifestation, any touch, anything to be given to them as a point of contact or anything they receive. Therefore, that's why when he said, Behold, I give unto you power to trend on serpents and on scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you they accepted it they received it it was theirs it will be yours in jesus name and now because of our time spiritual authority is given in proportion to your call or your calling you understand that there's a calling of an apostle there's a calling of a prophet there's a calling of an evangelist. There's a calling of a pastor. There's a calling of a teacher. And depending on the calling that God has given you. Remember, he appoints, he anoints, he approves. He has appointed you for something. And he will anoint you to be effective in what he has appointed you for. And he will approve you. In the ministry for which he has appointed and anointed you. Therefore, spiritual authority is given in proportion to your calling. Number two, it is given in proportion to your obedience to the Lord. The more you obey the Lord and you are living above reproach and it is your desire to do everything not to glorify self, but to glorify God, you will find the authority working in your life. Number three, it is given in proportion to your submission to God's authority, following the leading of the Holy Spirit in accordance with Scripture. You understand this verse now in Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, verse 9. For I am a man under authority, and I have soldiers under me. Stop there for a moment. Look at this centurion in the middle. He said, above me, there is an authority. I have authority above me. I am a man under authority. But there are soldiers under me authority above me i am in the middle i have soldiers under me and as long as i am under the authority above me then the soldiers that are under will be under my authority what does that mean 
my authority is in proportion to the submission I give to the authority above me. And Christ is the captain of our salvation. is our Lord and our master. And we are people, we are ministers under authority. Remember that when you are given authority, you speak, you act on earth. And then the authority above you, knowing your submission to him, knowing that you are under authority yourself, he confirms. He accomplishes whatsoever you pronounce. He says, you are totally under my authority. Therefore, I will make all things on earth to be under your authority. He says, therefore, I am a man under authority. And then he says, I have soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go. And he goeth. Oh, because when the one that's above me tells me to go, I go. Therefore, those who are under me, when I tell them go, they have to go. And then to another come, and he cometh. And to my servant do this, and he doeth it. And then he said, Lord Jesus, I know you are under the authority of your father. And you do everything to please him. And because you are under his authority, every other thing on earth will be under your authority. Let's learn that spiritual lesson therefore. That spiritual authority is given and it will be manifested in proportion to our submission to God's authority following the leading of the Holy Ghost in accordance with the scripture. Number four, spiritual authority is only as dynamic as our present fellowship with God and anointing of the Holy Spirit, the authority is there, but how will that authority act in a dynamic way? It will be depend it will be dependable, it will depend upon the fellowship we have with God and the way we allow the anointing to keep flowing. Let me give you two illustrations in scripture. Of two people that were given authority, but now in a symbolic manner. And then one tried to manifest that authority, it failed. It didn't work. But the other one manifested that authority, it worked. Let me show you the one that didn't work first. In 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4, reading from verse 29. Are you opening your Bible? Second Kings chapter 4 from verse 29. Then he said to Gehazi, Get up thy loins, take my staff. Take, not your staff, my staff in thine hand and go thy way. If thou meet any man, salute him not. And if any salute thee, answer him not again. And lay my staff upon the face of the child. You know the story here. The child was dead. And the mother came to Elisha. And Elisha said, is everything all right? And she said, it is well. But when she got to the man of God, she released the burden of her soul. And then Elijah, Elisha knew that the child was dead. And so Elisha said, my servant, I'm going to give you authority. Understand once again now, although you are given authority, the exercise, the effect of that authority will be in proportion to your own submission to the one that has authority over you. And as you look at Gehazi and Elisha, although he was the servant of Elisha, as you look at his life and his desire and his ambition and his covetousness in chapter 5, you will know that he was not fully under authority, although he was given the staff of Elisha. And then Elisha said, take this my staff 
And it's a symbol, a representation of my power, of my anointing, of my authority. You get to that child and lay the staff on the child. In verse 30, and the mother of the child said, As the Lord liveth, and as I so liveth, I shall not leave thee. And he arose and followed her. And Gehazi passed on before them and laid the staff upon the face of the child. But there was neither voice nor hearing. Wherefore, he went again to meet him and told him, saying, The child is not awake. I laid your rod. I laid your staff. I laid your authority. I laid the representation of your power on the child. No change. You understand now? Although you might be given authority, although the staff may be in your hand, and the rod of power, of authority, may be in your hand, you have to make sure that in your life, you are submissive to the authority of God, then every other thing will be submissive to your authority. Let's look at another one also now. Still a rod, still a staff. But now, because there was at that time obedience, submission, fellowship, agreement, harmony, that authority word. It's in Exodus. Look at chapter 4. Exodus chapter 4, from verse 17. Exodus 4, let's read from verse 14. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well, and also behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And when he seest thee, he will be glad in his heart. And thou shalt speak unto him, and put words in his mouth. And I will be with thy mouth, and will be with his mouth, and will teach you what ye shall do. And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people. And he, sh and, it sh and he shall be even, he shall be to thee instead of a mouth. And thou shalt be to him instead of God. And thou shalt take this rod in thine hand, wherewith thou shalt do signs. You understand the situation here? God called Moses. And he felt that he was incompetent, not capable to do what the Lord wanted him to do. He was his tamara. And he was walking by sight. And that made the Lord unhappy. But eventually, the Lord said, I'm listening to your excuse. And I'm going to assist you. I will be with your mouth. But I will give you an assistant. And now you understand, God above. Moses below and Aaron below Moses. And then God said, you will be to him instead of God. Because I'll be talking to you Moses directly. And then you will be talking to Aaron. You will be under my authority. He, Aaron, will be under your authority. And then you will take this rod in your hand. And it is through this rod, the representation of my power and authority, you will work signs. Let's now come to chapter 7. Exodus chapter 7, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God unto Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Aaron was still under Moses. Please note, Aaron was older than Moses. Therefore, when we talk about spiritual authority, 
it is not by a kind of a age seniority although he was older in spiritual authority he was under moses in verse 2 and thou shalt speak all that i command thee and aaron thy brother shall speak unto pharaoh that he sent the children of israel out of his land verse 10 and moses and aaron went in unto pharaoh and they did so as the lord commanded and aaron you notice that not moses aaron the one under the authority of moses aaron cast down his rod before pharaoh and before his servants and it became a serpent do you see here that god was above moses in authority and power but moses was above aaron and moses gave aaron a rod just like elisha gave unto gezai in the case of gezai it didn't work in the case of aaron it worked why because aaron submitted to the arrangement the order the authority that god had put in place look at chapter 8 exodus chapter 8 and in verse 5 and the lord spake unto moses say unto aaron say unto aaron he didn't tell aaron directly god above moses moses above aaron stretch forth thine hand with thy rod over the streams over the rivers over the ponds and cause frogs to come up upon the land of egypt and aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of egypt and the frogs came up and covered the land of egypt the rod was in his hand actually that was the rod of moses actually that was the rod that was in the hand of moses when god met him and he said with this rod you will do signs and wonders it was the representation of the pact of the token of the covenant and the arrangement he had with god and now when aaron was to manifest the authority the rod was given unto him and as long as he was submissive to the authority of moses then the rod was walking as he thought as he thought to work in verse 16 chapter 8 exodus the lord said unto moses say unto aaron have you noticed in these passages i read to you now god could have spoken to aaron but he didn't he spoke to moses because of the use of authority god will speak to moses and moses will speak to aaron and even though aaron was older aaron will obey under the authority of moses in that verse 16 stretch out thy rod and smite the dust of the land that it may be it may become lies throughout all the land of egypt and they did so for aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth and it became lies in man and in beast all the dust of the land became lies throughout the land of egypt and the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lies but they could not when that power begins to operate in your life, the magicians and the sorcerers, they will not be able to duplicate the power of God in your life in Jesus' name. It's very clear now when we talk about authority. Now, when you talk about authority, the Lord equips his ministers with authority. I give unto you power. I give unto you authority. Go and heal the sick. Go and deliver the oppressed but please understand you stay in fellowship with the lord stay under the anointing remain in faith remain in obedience to the lord and you'll find that the authority will continue to work in your life point number two examples of authority in ministry 
examples of authority in ministry. In Mark chapter 1, Mark chapter 1, verse 25 through to verse 27. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had turned him, and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were all amazed, in so much that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority he commandeth even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. That's authority. You will give a word of command. You will make a decree. And then that evil spirit will depart. That's the authority we're talking about. Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. From verse 1 to verse 8. I'm sure you know the story. But let's see now. How Peter manifested the authority. Remember, the authority that Peter manifested is the same authority that you have been given. Well, you say, but Peter saw the Lord Jesus Christ face to face. When he told them, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. And you are saying, I wish I were there. That the Lord would have spoken unto me directly. But the Lord has also told us in talking to Thomas, Because you have seen me, Thomas, you have believed. But blessed are those that have not seen me, and yet they have believed. I want you now to put yourself side by side with Peter. Because in Acts chapter 3, he manifested authority. How did he get that authority? He saw the Lord after the Lord rose from the dead. And then Jesus told him, and he could see the risen Lord, and he told the others too, not only himself, these signs shall follow them that believe. Here you are now, standing by the side of Peter. And then you are saying, now wait a minute. That same word that Christ gave to Peter, he also has given to me. The only difference is that when Christ gave those words to Peter, or to John, or to James, or to the rest of the apostles, they saw him face to face. But I cannot see him face to face. But what a wonderful word. They got it because they saw him. But I am more blessed. You are more blessed. Because you have not seen him, and yet you believe. Do you believe tonight? Yes. Oh, he has given you the same word. You believe on the Lord, that's how you were born again. And this sign shall follow them that believe, even though you do not see him face to face. This same authority now, you can manifest. I said you can manifest. Yes. Acts chapter 3, verse 6. Then Peter said, silver... And gold have I none, but such as I have. Give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand, no doubt in his mind. He lifted him up, he knew it would be manifested. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength, and he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple walking and leaping and praising God. But let's remind ourselves again. The greater the consecration, the greater the authority in ministry. Actually, we're given the same authority. Actually, all those disciples, all those apostles were given the same authority. Even Paul the Apostle that came much, much later, he was given the same authority. But as you look at the Bible, you will see 
the more committed you are to the Lord, the more consecrated you are to the Lord, the more submissive you are to the Lord, the greater will be the manifestation of that authority in your ministry. An uncompromising life of holiness will give you boldness in ministry. And then that authority will heal the sick, will cast out devils, and great things will be done in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number three now, exercising spiritual authority. Exercising spiritual authority. Let's uh, stay with um, a particular chapter. And I want you to notice now, as we're going to look at some series of events or happenings in Luke chapter 4. And I want you to see in Luke chapter 4 the progression of how things took place. And remember that in chapter 3 of Luke, Jesus Christ was baptized in water. And now, when he came out of the water, the Spirit of God in the form of a dove was upon him. And the voice of the Father spoke from heaven, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. That's verse 22 of chapter 3. But now, chapter 4, verse 1. Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan, and he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Then you have the account of his temptation. But in all those temptations, he overcame. Then in verse 14, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. Notice, you have been saved, you have been sanctified, you are baptized in the Holy Ghost. You are full of the Holy Ghost. Then, after being filled with the Holy Ghost, there will be the times of testing and the times of temptation. And by the grace of God, you overcome temptation. And that temptation does not reduce spiritual power in your life. The trial does not reduce the spiritual authority in your life. If you overcome those temptations, then like Jesus returned from the wilderness, from the field of temptation, in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. Galilee here is talking about the field of ministry. That means then, as you are filled with the Holy Ghost, all the things that will take place during the day, during the week, during the month, in your interaction with people, as you walk on the street, as you face temptation, you do not allow all those temptations to bring you down. You keep your eyes on the Lord and you overcome. You will find, although you were full of the Holy Ghost before the temptation, after the temptation, you return as you get to the field of ministry in the power of the Spirit. Now, verse 18. Once again, remember the series now. One, the experience. Being filled and full of the Holy Ghost. Two, overcoming temptation. Three, returning in the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, there is a discovery. They gave unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And in verse 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me. To preach the gospel unto the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised. You discover from holy scriptures what is written concerning you. You are filled with the Spirit. Authority is there already with the anointing. You overcome temptation, and then you return to the field of ministry in the power of the Holy Ghost, and then you open the scriptures. And the Spirit of God will direct you to the appropriate passage in scripture, showing you, 
revealing to you what is written concerning you. Verse 22 now. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? Now, the words coming out of your mouth, they will carry anointing and power and authority that the people that knew you before, but they missed you for a few weeks. They missed you since the Holy Ghost came upon you. They had not seen you. And since you went by the leading of the Spirit of God, and you had trial, and you had temptation, and you overcame, they didn't see you. As you return to Galilee, the field of ministry, they have not seen you in the power of the Holy Ghost. As the Holy Spirit has directed you now to the word that is written concerning you, all of a sudden, there is something inside you that says, that's you. That word is talking about you. This is your day. This is your time. This is your opportunity. And then you open your mouth. And the people that listen to you, they say, it's not this Samuel. Is this not Joseph? Is this not so and so? Is this not uh, Josephine? We knew her before. We knew him before. Because now, anointing has transformed your life. And the authority makes you to be another man. Makes you to be another woman. Then in verse 32, look at the progression now. Verse 32, and they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. When you speak, those sinners, they will not be able to resist your word. They will come down in conviction and be born again. And evil spirits will not be able to resist your word. They will come out of the people they are tormenting in Jesus' name. But start to cease. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power, he commanded the unclean spirits and they come out. And those unclean spirits, they will not even be able to argue. They will not be able to resist. Can you see the progression? Verse 39 now. And he stood over her. This is the mother of the wife of Peter that had fever. That's in verse 38. Now verse 39. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever. He spoke to sickness as if sickness had ears to hear. And it left her. And immediately she arose and ministered unto them. Now, do you know that it's now your own time to exercise that same authority? When you look at the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, he had authority over the storm. He had authority over the elements of nature. He had authority over the fruitless tree. He had authority over unclean spirits. He had authority over sickness. He even had authority over death. But... There's a secret here. It's important. Jesus Christ said, The prince of this world cometh, and he has nothing in me. When you do not allow the devil to deposit anything in you, not even a little thought, not even a little covetousness, and you can say, by the grace of God, by the cleansing of the blood of the Lamb, Satan, and the demons, they have nothing in me. They are going to fear you. They are going to tremble whenever you stand to minister. And I know that this is the day. God has timing for everything. And if you will believe the word of the Lord that I'm speaking to you tonight, this will be your day. In Job chapter 22. Job chapter 22. Verse 28, and thou also shall decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. Why don't you say this way, 
And I shall also decree a thing. I shall also decree a thing. And it shall be established unto me. And the light shall shine upon my ways. Are those empty words? Do you believe them? Do you believe this is your own time? Everybody has his own time. Moses had his own time. David had his own time. And at the right time, at the time of David, he had, the Lord anointed him. And the Lord sent him to meet Goliath. And David knew, this is my chance. I may not meet Goliath any other time. This is my day. And I'm going to bring down this man. This is your day of opportunity. I'm pleading with you, don't play with it. Don't joke with it. You will leave this uh, Congress uh, this uh, weekend, if you are from Nigeria here, and if you are from outside, maybe next week, whatever your flight will be, immediately you step into Galilee. Your field of ministry, that power will begin to be manifested. <laughs> the Lord has anointed you. He has authorized you. And this spiritual authority will be manifested in your ministry in Jesus' name. I will also decree a thing. And it shall be established unto me. And the light shall shine upon my ways. Rise up and confess that. Don't say anything negative. Don't doubt it. Believe it's your day. It's your time. This is your chance. This is your opportunity. What a glorious day for you. Believe it. Speak it out in faith. And the signs and wonders will follow. He has given you the same authority. He has given you the same power. The infilling of the Holy Ghost. The anointing of the Spirit of God that breaks the yoke. Believe it. Be submissive to the authority of the Lord. Because the authority will be manifested in proportion to your submission to the Lord. Accept it and believe it. Brothers and sisters, accept and believe. He appoints, he anoints, 
He approves. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do you believe that this is your own day? That this is your own time? The Lord has placed you where you are and is going to accomplish his will in that place through you. But first of all, Satan and demons should not have any deposit of anything in you. You will not allow them. And even their sicknesses and infirmities, you will not allow them to deposit upon you. And you will not be going about confessing, Satan put something in my body. You will not be going about and confessing, Satan put something inside my family. You will not be going about and uh, repeating those uh, negative words, uh, Satan is troubling my brain. He has put his agent, his messenger, inside my blood system. The prince of this world comes. He has nothing in you. So first of all, we're going to purge our whole system. Anything belonging to the enemy. Anything belonging to the devil. Any sickness, any infirmity, any affliction, any property, any sin, any peculiar secret sin, we have to get rid of those things. The prince of this world cometh, he has nothing, nothing, nothing in me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can you raise up your hand? Do you believe that those hands are anointed already? Yeah. All right, if you believe that, lay it upon yourself now. Anointed hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, we become a mighty army in this new year. We reject anything and everything belonging to the devil. For every brother here, for every sister here. I pray, O oh Lord, that fellow there with the tuberculosis, I command, come out in Jesus' name. The asthma represented on my left hand side there, I command, by the mighty power of God, you asthmatic condition, come out in Jesus' name. The man over there in Hall 4 that has a swollen part, a private part of your body, I command everything to become normal now in Jesus' name. The one that appears is like they're knocking hammer on your head. I command that thing does not have any right to be there. That thing like the hammer on the head, I command come out in Jesus' name. The fellow over there that has the pile, I'm commanding right now the pile in your body be removed in Jesus' name. The one that has a swelling in your armpit, I pray that the mighty power of God will touch you. And that swelling be removed in Jesus' name. 
the one with the ulcer in your stomach and it appears uh, the sin is just biting and grinding and cutting, I pray that the mighty power of God will touch you. And that ulcer be removed in Jesus' name. The fellow that is hearing noise uh, in, your, in your brain, in your ears, and they are trying to turn you to be another sin, they do not allow you to rest. I command that noise be silenced now in Jesus' name. Uh, the woman there that has the air on your head falling up and uh, you're afraid you really don't know what to do the lord is delivering you now i command that that thing that is falling up will grow in jesus name the fellow that has the arthritis i'm praying right now that the arthritis in your body the pain in your bones everything will vanish away in jesus name the one that every time you sleep at night, when you're about to sleep very deeply and enjoy your sleep, then something will come, either they knock at the door, and then when you open, there's nobody there. Or they press you on the bed, and then when you wake up, you can't see anybody, and they're just tormenting your life and disturbing your life. I command that those personalities, they will live in Jesus' name. I pray for those people that are married and uh, you see that instead of enjoying your fellowship with your husband or with your wife, it's like an unseen uh, personality uh, that is coming to disturb you. That personality I command you now, get out of that family in Jesus' name. The ones that have been tormented and afflicted by evil personalities and by instruments of mummy water and all that, I break all that yoke. I destroy that thing now. Set them free in Jesus' name. And the fellow there with the itches in the body, and it appears this part is scratching, that part is scratching, until blood will be coming out, and then internally your body is not smooth because of all the itching and the scratching. I pray that right now, all those things will dry up, all the germs will be taken away, be healed in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray that you touch all your children touch all your people and remove those infirmities and remove those sicknesses and remove those problems from them set them free in jesus name i pray for that individual that has a relative at home that has mental problem and he tied that individual down because of the violence i pray that the power of god will go from here now and go to that mad person in sin relative back at home deliver that individual in jesus name the person here that they are sitting on your business, they are sitting on your work, and uh, the money is there outside that they owe you, but the thing is not in your hand. I pray that the Lord will release it right now. And the blessing of the Lord will come upon you in Jesus' name. The one that senses that somebody that is stronger than you were in the past put a curse upon you. And you've been suffering under that cause. And no matter what you try to do in life, you, you put your hand here, you put your hand there. It even affects in spiritual things that the things you are doing, you cannot see any head or tail. I command that cause, I command that evil sin be taken away in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you sprinkle the blood of the Lamb upon all these, my brothers and sisters. Deliver everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray the desires of their hearts in this new year for each individual, for each family, grant unto them in Jesus' name. Now we come before you as ministers. We know that this is going to be a new day, a time of opportunity. And Lord, I'm praying, whatever ministry you have given us here, when we stand in that ministry, when we minister in that ministry, when we declare your truth in that ministry, you will approve every one of these, your children, with signs, wonders, miracles, healings, deliverances, in Jesus' name. I pray that each of us represented here, our ministry will have a new kind of power, a new kind of authority. And we pray that the things we have not seen before, the things we have been hearing about happening in other people's ministry, good, good things, I pray it will happen in your people's ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. And when you begin to do these great and mighty things, keep us humble. Amen. Keep us submissive. Amen. Keep us more consecrated. Amen. That once the anointing begins to flow, it will not cease. 
it will not dry up it will continue until we see you face to face in jesus name we pray that as a result of this congress as a result of what we're receiving here in every location in every church situation i pray oh lord sinners in their multitudes will be getting converted Believers through the ministry of your children will be getting edified, sanctified, purified in Jesus' name. And those who have been looking for the power of the Holy Ghost for a long time and they have not received, hear, O oh Lord, before they go, they will receive in Jesus' name. And as they go back home and they minister, the people they are ministering to will also receive the power of the Holy Ghost. Let your hand be mighty upon every brother, upon every sister, that we will know something definite has happened to each one. And when we go back home and we start the ministry afresh, the things we had never seen, the things we have never heard of, will be seen, will be hearing of them. Your name will be glorified and exalted. Your church will grow and be developed. Sinners will be rushing in and getting converted. And we'll be hearing good stories, testimonies from everyone. Thank you because we know you have answered.